I got off the road after Us and Them, the second album, and I looked at Barry, um, the, the drummer in the band, who's been with me from day one, um, and I told him that I was just going to go away for a while, which kind of made him a bit nervous because he didn't really know what that meant. So for about a month, I didn't even look at a guitar. I didn't turn the radio on. I didn't even listen to music, to be honest with you, um, because I kind of felt like I had fallen a bit out of love with music, which was a very sad feeling for me to have to endure. Always under attack, always coming in last, bringing up the past. No one owes you anything, I think. You need a shotgun blast, a kick in the ass. So I don't know exactly what time it was or even where I was. I remember I was in a hotel room. I believe I was in Florida. All of these ideas started to like fly at me from out of nowhere. And I had one journal booklet with me that had maybe six or seven pages left. So I started writing and I ran out of paper and I didn't feel like getting out of the hotel room. So what I did was I took a pen that I was writing with and started writing on the walls of the hotel room. So for each section of the walls that I would fill up, I would take pictures with my camera phone to remember what they were or the parts that I liked. This was an album that I wanted to push myself further than I had ever, quite honestly, that I, the way I looked at it was, how far can I take it? How big can we make it sound? You know, we named it The Sound of Madness for a reason, because uh, it was madness, but it was beautiful when it was being done. But it wasn't just about drums, bass, guitar, vocal. It was about, you know, we used a lot of synthesizers on this record, a lot of different key changes. We used a, a lot of piano bass on every song. Um, four of the songs have a 21-piece orchestra. That was a dream come true for me because I'd been waiting a long time to use a, you know, to have the, the chance to actually not only write a piece of music, but to have it accompanied by a real orchestra. <laughs> A lot of people go, how did you get Rob Cavallo to do your record? And I, I look at him and I go, to be quite honest with you, I didn't know who Rob Cavallo was when I met him. I had no idea that he had done Green Day and My Chemical Romance, Kid Rock, The Goo Goo Dolls. Um, and it, quite, it didn't really matter to me because I remember when people were, you know, my A&R was telling me about that and I said, that's great that he's done all those records, but it doesn't really matter to me because I'm not in any of those bands. Rob asking me what what is the goal with this album and I said when I'm dead and gone uh, I want people to be I want them to remember the record as an album that the world said needed to be made. Yeah.